Hey guys. All right, folks, we're here today because my good friend, I should say, our good friend, Milton, uh, one of the, the hot shots, one of the big boss men's at Prague Power. He's an amazing haircut. Oh, the guy's great style. Great style. He's, he's, he's established dude. Yeah. He's established dude. I think all he's missing is a goatee. Yeah. I think that's, that's all he's missing in order to elevate himself, in order to level up the His next look. stage. Yeah, it's the next stage. It's like Pokemon. He needs to like level evolve. up. Yeah, evolve into the next level. So anyways, he sent me a message and he asked me to ask you to ask us to check out this band from Brazil, Jack the Joker. And the song is Denied. Knowing him the way we do, I'm just going to assume that this is Prague. Yeah. I think that's a fair assumption. I mean, after all, he, he, he does work at Prague Power. So I, I there is power. but uh, So there could it could be Prague or Power. I, I think it's prog. I think it's prog too. There's no Jack way. the Joker doesn't sound like a power metal band. Yeah, you know, just 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 saying. Uh, all right, so if you, it was like Jack McFive, maybe it would have been like Jack McFive. Wow, uh, Jack McSix. Jack McSix. Something along those lines. I'm surprised they haven't hired those guys to come and play some prog power. That would yeah, be true. quite a success. Well, I, honestly, that would be uh, people would go nuts over that shit. So anyhow, are you ready for this? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Let's check this out. I think I was right. This is nice.
Wow. Uh, let me just say this. Uh, I want to get your opinion on this, but I got to start off by saying that only two kinds of people wear Hawaiian shirts. Retired folks and party animals, and I don't think he's retired. Well, they're in the saying, and Glenn Quagmire. <laughs> he's a party animal. Party he animal. falls under the second category. And the second thing I want to say is that, man, I never thought that a husky Gabby Gold had that kind of a range. But he he does. He looked like Gabby Gold. Just saying. Just saying. An off-season Gabby Gold, if you will. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, what do you think of uh, um, Jack the Joker? To be honest with you, because I'm not a huge Prague fan. Neither am I. But fuck, his voice had me in there. The clean vocals, yeah. yeah. The hush vocals, I thought, was like... Not needed. Honestly, for a song like this, I don't think you need it. No, it's not needed. But, uh, yeah. The, the, warmth, wise, the warmth of the clean vocals I think so song-wise, there was some parts where it was losing me. Uh, but then there was some parts with his vocals felt really, really good. I think his vocals is what kept me not only in the song, but Great what, vocal made, what made me enjoy the song were his vocals. Adding those on top of the, the guitars. And uh, usually in Prague, sometimes they kind of like drift ways apart from each other. Uh, when his vocals would come, they would kind of like come together a bit. Yeah. And uh, it, it gave the song more fluidity and... and, and and stability too. It didn't, it didn't make the song feel like a normal prog song, kind of out there. Um, but yeah, his vocals fucking kept me in there. They were so good. His clean vocal. He has such a good range, man. Very warm, like very like, warm sound. Like his voice is like warm, like it. It's nice. The clean vocals carry. It's not just warm, but it has depth to it. Like I, I really like the texture of his voice. The harsh vocals. I thought they were okay. Like I mean, I. Fine, throw them in there. Whatever. Show me everything the guy can do. But a song like this is going to have me, depending on how those cleans are going to be, and specifically because of the overall melancholic melody that the song has. I like those little spices of heaviness that the track has, and the harsh vocals kind of come uh, dragged into the song through those parts. I don't mind because it kind of wakes you up. It gives you a little bit of a jolt. Because if the song is going to be very melancholic the way this song is, it needs to be shorter. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to put people to sleep if it's this long. So having that, that heaviness, both musically and vocally, uh, helps break the monotony uh, of that melancholy that the song has. Yeah. The only thing I wish they had... Uh, they have they had uh, gone a little bit further down that rabbit hole is the acoustic guitar that kind of like bossa nova. I think sound. we did though. I wanted a little bit more. It was really pronounced in the beginning, and at the end it, and it then came it, back a bit. But it disappeared for a very long period of it time. Did. You know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, or at least to me, it felt like it didn't have the same predominance. I I kind of wanted to see maybe even going with a solo. And, and, and using the acoustic for the solo would have been interesting, an interesting dynamic. Uh, I, I don't know. It was, I, I love that more traditional Brazilian guitar sound. Uh, a, a band like Angra does it really well. And, and, I, and it adds almost like a folk element to the music. Because when, you, when I hear that guitar sound, I, I know the, either the band is Brazilian or they're heavily influenced by Brazilian music is either one or the other. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it, it's something that it's part of your DNA, it's part of your culture, it's part of who you are. The more you can infuse that into your music and make it part of the texture of your music, the better it is because it feels more natural, it feels more organic. I really enjoyed that beginning, I really enjoyed that end. I wish there was a little bit more of it. Maybe have it as a layer to, to the guitars in the background, um, but a layer that is not so thin that you can't hear it. Like a layer that it's there, and sometimes it creeps up, and it creeps down, and it creeps up. It cre I just wanted a little bit more consistency from it, because I, I thought it was magnificent. It was really nice. And the way that it started, started off with that, and then the electric guitar comes in playing the same melody that that guitar is... Like, I, I thought that dynamic was so interesting, so why, why abandon it? You know what I mean? Why not just... Continue, continue down that line, yeah. continue down the, because that warmth of sound that comes from that traditional, uh, uh, from that traditional guitar sound, also matches super well with his vocal performance. It, it, this is like, it, this is a song that you could easily strip down and make it full acoustic, and you go to like one of those, uh, you know, uh, bars that have like uh, 
uh, a band performing in whatever, and, and you have this kind of performance. It has that kind of feel. Yeah. It's almost like a Brazilian fado, if that's even a thing. I don't, I don't think that's even a thing, but do you know what I mean? Because the song is super melancholic. The fado is super melancholic. I know, different but kind it, of guitar. it can't be the same because Brazilians are too happy. Oh, but this song is, is super melancholic. Yeah, this song true. doesn't make you want to samba. True. This is one to make you, like, I was half expecting, you know, all the other Brazilian shit to come out, you know, the fucking, do, 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 like, the fucking Brazilians uh, are super, funk. like, Brazilians are happy, but, like, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're not. You're walking around the beaches of Ipanema, you see a, what appears to be a hot chick, she takes your wallet, and then you realize it's not a hot chick at all. Something else. It's, Ros it's Ronaldo. It's, it's a transformer. It's Ronaldo. <laughs> it's a transformer. It was more than it meets the eye. And he walked away with your wallet. Fuck. You know what I mean? You At that point, you're not very happy. Yes. At that point, you're not very happy. Have you seen uh, Ronaldinho walking in the tunnel and the guy nutmegs him? And he gets so pissed off, he kicks the ball and he tries to fight with the guy? He was not very happy at that point. Mm -mm. He didn't like to get nutmeg by a YouTube guy. You never seen that video? No. I, I don't think I've ever seen Ronaldinho pissed off as I saw him. He was really he pissed was off. probably pissed when he went to jail. Ronaldinho went to jail? Yeah, Ronaldinho went to jail. He tried flying uh, with the Paraguay passport. Like, like people don't know it's Ronaldinho. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah, or, like, like, those or like, gums, most... like those gums, those gums are blessed to anybody. Like, no. or, uh, <laughs> or like most South American people refer to him, Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> you know what I mean? I told you that story. I was watching a, yeah. a Copa America there's a, game. There's a woman on the, on the, the commentator there's referred a woman on the Jar Jar Binks. On the Brazilian women's national team, there's a, a, a girl, she looks exactly like... Uh, Ronaldinha? Oh, she's Ronaldinha, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, search it up. Like, honestly, people, like, I, I don't know if that's his kid or not. I don't know. Like, it's a spitting image. The the, the gums and everything. Wow. Wow. She's the, the, fa the favela... The, <laughs> the favela look. The favela look. The favela smile. Yeah, like, she oh. has what his son doesn't have. The favela flair. Have you seen his have... son play? No, I don't even... His son, I his son signed to Barcelona. Because oh, he was really? part of the academy. And he signed for Barcelona. But when you see him play, he's good. But he doesn't have that favela flair that his dad he has. Because he didn't grow up there. Because he grew up there, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So anyways, I uh, I enjoy this song. I'm not a huge prog guy by no means. By no means. But uh, the little the little Brazilian flavor of, the, of that acoustic guitar and his voice, those two things alone. Um, Just him being there. To, he, to he has really this enjoy. good, warm feeling to him. Gabigol. <laughs> Gabigol. A little bit of a huskier version of Gabigol. Uh, you know, like, th this is more like Gabi Gol when he was at Benfica. Where he played five games. I don't think he scored a single goal. When he came from Inter. Oh, yeah. Before he went to Brazil. I think he's at Flamengo now. Isn't he at Flamengo? Dude, a lot of Brazilian players know where he is, uh, come to Benfica and then just, like, go into existence. Oh, so you're saying that's where Brazilians go to die? <laughs> like, no, but I feel like they, they have to touch their foot in Benfica before going somewhere else. Benfica is the, it's, it's like the last chance. I don't know if it's a last chance. Stardom in Europe. I, think, I don't know. I don't know. Like Paul, remember Paulo Nunez went to Benfica and he played like what four ga a game or two or whatever. He scored a goal and then he look at Cebolinha. And then he fucked off back to yeah back look to at, Brazil. Look at Cebolinha. Yeah, João Vitor Cebolinha. Cebolinha. Yeah. Many. It's like they go to they go there because it's like we want to go to Europe. No, I, I don't want to. I don't want to. And then this is too much. This is like too much like Brazil. Let's go back to Brazil. No, I, I the issue uh, and, and I don't want to get this video off the rails. So it's even though it's, it's already happened. I, I think the issue is Brazilian football. For as much as people think Brazilian football, and I'm not I'm not talking about Brazilian football in terms of the individual quality of the players. I'm the talking league. about the league and, and the way the teams are structured and the tactical aspect. Brazilian football doesn't even touch the knees of Portuguese football league. And I know. A lot of people are going to be pissed at this comment, but this is the reality. And if you don't believe me, just go look at who's coaching now in Brazil and who's having success. Portuguese coaches. The Portuguese league, for as shitty as it is, it's it super is. well organized. It's, it's, the teams play super strong defensively. Yeah, yeah. The, the games are low scoring. There's a lot of defensive... Uh, uh, the, the teams are very defensive minded outside of the big... Four. But even the big three, have, uh, the big big four, yeah, even they have tough against like, smaller teams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's it, like it's never a blowout. Uh, it, exactly. The teams just play. The teams are more tactically aware. Yeah. 
even the smaller teams, they're super tactically aware. When you go see the Brazilian league, it's like they're playing on on the favela. It's like a free for all. There's no there's no the real play Jinga style. No, because they're really the, the players are really good, so they depend a lot on their individual talent mm -hmm. to break the games. But it's not like they're playing super tactical awareness and whatever. And and like once again, if you don't believe me, you, you just have to look at two things. Go look at the coaches that are having success in Brazil, Portuguese coaches. Look at a uh, Abel Ferreira. Yeah. Uh, one again with Paul. The guys won everything with Paul Mares. And then go look at what Brazilian teams do when they play against European competition. Club World Cup, Man City, like... Yeah, yeah. They, they, they destroy but them. But some, some Brazilian players, when they go over to European teams... They, they have a hard time... The, depending, first adjusting, but then they... They have a hard time adjusting, but if you notice that the players from Brazil that do better uh, are either like forward players or central defenders. True. You don't see holding midfielders coming from Brazil. When was the last... Casemiro. Dunga was a, hold, a great holding midfielder... Casemiro, he was good at Real Madrid. He was good at Porto. At Man United, he hasn't been. Yeah, he's, he's been okay, but he's, not, he's to me, he's not even a real true, true holding mid because he still approaches. He's on, he's not a box to box either. Ramirez. He's a little bit of a hybrid. Ramirez is on the wing, but anyhow, uh, this is football talk. I just feel like the we Brazilian game is a little bit looser, but it's fun to watch. It's fun to watch, but it's a little bit looser. It's really fun to watch because they're not like super rigid no, in their fluid. tactics. They're, and, and they're not. They're not. It's just it's not the way they play. It's not the way they play. And I know I'm going to get tons of hate for this, but I don't care. I stand on my position. I feel like we're going to get hate for this because it's not music related. The people watching this video because of the Brazilian band, I'm sure they're footy fans oh, as well. Course. So I'm, I'm sure. But I'm sure I pissed them off by this. Because I saw a comment of somebody saying that Santos, who went down the division, yeah, got who, went, who got relegated, that they would beat the, the top four in the Portuguese league with their eyes closed. Are you guys fucking kidding me? N not in your wildest dreams that would happen. <laughs> not in your wildest dreams. They couldn't beat Fulham Milikau. Like... No, even mid-table teams, they would have a hard time beating. because, And I'm not saying that they wouldn't be able to beat them, it's but it would be, like, would be like a one nothing game kind of thing. It's, it's, uh, Portuguese teams play super strong defensively yeah. like they're they're they don't open up they they play a super rigid defensive position yeah they're very aware like the the the, the first defender is the striker he's the first defender putting pressure and stuff so it's a very different style of playing they're more organized from when you see a, it's harder to do those it's like, harder to break the runs there's no space getting... to do there's no space to do those runs and yeah. when you start doing them somebody chops your legs it's it's a very it's a more physical game it yeah. is a more physical game so players that are like sibling is a perfect example he came over and he flopped because like he was used to having space but now you no don't space. have space and you have to play defense you can't just attack so it's it's a completely different game anyhow <laughs> still a fun league to watch though fun league to watch great great individual players that come out of the Felipe league Mello? yeah he's fucking great great individual he, players. He, he had like a fight during the um, the club world cup final look, look the fact that marcelo just to finish off on this, Marcelo went back there to Fluminense. They, they lost to Man City. I mm -hmm. think it was Fluminense yeah, lost to yeah. Man City. He went back there to finish his career. There's no way he could play at, 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 at in any European league at that level. He tried. He went to Turkey. He couldn't cut it. He went back to Brazil. Why? Because defensively, you just it's way more demanding. The Europe, and I'm not just talking about the Portuguese league. I'm talking about Europe, Europe in general. Europe. It's a lot yeah. more demanding in terms of tactics, positioning. Well, that's why that's why Portuguese teams have trouble with like Italian teams. They're, they're even more more, more technical even more. and positional than Portuguese teams are. Uh, we we work well with certain countries. The, it, it all the, we work well, for example, against English teams. We normally do really well. Last year, Sporting eliminated Arsenal, who was first in, in the league. Why? Because of that tactical defense works really well then in the counter-attack. And they're yeah. really strong on the... on the Now they don't call it counter-attack anymore. They call it transition football. So now in the transition, they're really good at that. They break really quickly. And they're still strong at the back. You know what I mean? They're, they're willing to take a pounding for like 80 minutes... And then score a goal in the last 10 to win the game. It's not something you see uh, in Brazilian football. You don't. No, no, no. You don't. It's like, it's tennis. Brazilian football is like tennis. It's like back and forth. More entertaining to watch. Well, I'll, give you, I'll give you watch. that. But if, you, if you've never watched But football, not as tactical sounding. Yeah, if, if you're someone who's getting into watching football, you watch Brazilian League because it's, it's, it's more stimulating to the mind. Yeah. It's like there's great players coming out of Argentina, but... Is there is there any Argentinian team that could go play in the Champions League and go far in the Champions League? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Neither Boca or River. Would, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. They're not as technically technically sound as a team. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, where is the team? Now you're Arnold. How is Arnold, Arnold going to be the new coach of Benfica? No, no, we still have uh, we still have the Schmidt there, the Schmitty, Schmitty. All right. On that note, guys. Um, ah, anytime we can talk about football and metal oh, at the same always, time, it's always a win-win situation. It's always a win-win. All right. On that note, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Let us know your thoughts on the band, on the footy. Hit us up in the comment section. We'll see you all at the next one. See ya.